In this video, we are going to learn how to translate words into algebraic expressions. First of all, let us recall what we mean by a variable. Now, a variable is a symbol that represents an unknown number. We use letters to represent variables. Some letters that we commonly use to represent variables are A, B, C, P, Q, R, S, T, M, N, and so on. We can actually use any letter we want to represent a variable, but usually we avoid using the letter O because it's easy to confuse this letter with the number zero. So other than this letter O, we can use any other letter we want to represent a variable. Now let us have a look at a few problems to understand how we can translate words into algebraic expressions. So first of all, what do we have? We have the sum of five and a number. So the sum of five and a number. So we have the word sum, so we're going to need an addition sign, and it's the sum of five and a number. We don't know what that number is, so we can use any variable to represent it, and for the variable we can choose whatever letter we want, so let's choose the letter n. And so what have we expressed? We have expressed the sum of five and a number. And so we have translated the words into an algebraic expression, 5 plus n. So let's consider the next one. Add 8 to a number. So we have to add the number 8 to a number. So here we have been asked to add. So that means that we're going to need the plus sign. And we're going to add the number 8 to a number. We don't know what that number is. So we're going to use a variable. Let's use the letter m to represent this variable. And so we can see that we have added the number 8 to a number. And so we have translated the words into an algebraic expression, m plus 8. Next we have a number plus 11. So what do we have? We have a number plus 11. And so if we translate this into an algebraic expression, we will have a number, let's use p to represent that, plus 11. And so what do we end up with? We end up with a number plus 11. So we have translated the words into an algebraic expression, p plus 11. So similarly, let us translate the other sentences into algebraic expressions. So next we have 12 more than a number. So 12 more. Since we have more, we're going to use the addition sign, and it's 12 more than a number. What is the number? It's going to be represented using some variable. Let us use the variable t. So 12 more than a number, we can write that as t plus 12. Next, we have a number increased by 20. It is increased, so we have to add the number 20. And we add that to a number. The number is represented using a variable. Let us just use the variable s. So a number increased by 20 is s plus 20. Next we have the difference between 70 and a number. So what do we end up with? We have the difference between 70 and a number. So this time we have the word difference, so that means we're going to use the subtraction sign. And is the difference between 70 and a number. So we write 70 before the subtraction sign, and a number after the subtraction sign, we're going to use any variable to represent the number. Let us use the variable x. So the difference between 70 and a number, we can represent that using 70 minus x. So we have the difference between 70 and a number. Let us have a look at the next one. Subtract 2 from a number. So we need to subtract 2 from a number. So we're going to consider a number. Let's consider the variable y. And from this, we are going to subtract 2. So from this, we subtract 2. And so subtract 2 from a number, we can write y minus 2. Next, we have 6 minus a number. So we have 6 minus a number. Let us use z to represent the number. So we have 6 minus z. Next, we have 16 less than a number. So 16 less than a number. So first of all, we are going to have the number. We can use any variable to represent that. Let us use the variable n. And it's 16 less than this. So from n, we are going to subtract 16. 
and so we have 16 less than a number as n minus 16. Next, we have 34 decreased by a number. So we have 34, and this is decreased by a number. So from 34, we are going to subtract a number. Let us use the variable m. So we have 34 minus m. Now we have 6 times a number. So this time we have times. And what? We have 6 times a number. And so this time we can write 6 times a number. Let us use x to represent this. And we can write this as 6x. So 6 times a number will be 6x. And we have 6 times a number. So this will be 6x. Next, we have the product of 10 and a number. So the product of 10 and a number. The word product means that we need to use the multiplication sign. And we have the product of 10 and a number. Let us use a variable to represent that number. Let's consider y. So 10 times y, we can write that as 10y. So the product of 10 and a number is 10y. Next, we have thrice a number. Now, thrice a number just means three times a number. So if we consider any number, let us consider the variable z for this, and we multiply that by 3, we will have thrice a number. So we have 3z. Next, we have a number doubled. So let us consider the number to be 8. And we are doubling that number. So we multiply it by 2. So we have 2 8. So a number doubled can be written as 2 8. Next, we have 1 half of a number. Whenever we use the word of, we need to use multiplication. So we end up with 1 half of a number. Let us use b to represent the number. And so we have 1 half of a number. And half times b, we can write that as half b. So this is what we get. Now next, we have a number multiplied by 32. So let us consider c to be the number, and we multiply this by 32. So c times 32, we can write that as 32c, and so a number multiplied by 32 will be 32c. Next, we have to divide a number by 16. So what are we doing? We are dividing a number by the number 16. So we are going to consider a number. Let us use the variable m to represent it, and we divide this number m by 16. So this symbol over here, this represents division, and we divide a number by 16. And so m over 16 is what we get. Next, we have 14 divided by a number. So we have 14, and we divide that by a number. Let us use n to represent that number. Next, we have the quotient of 45 and a number. So we have the quotient, so we need division. And we have the quotient of 45 and a number. Let us use x to represent that. So we have 45 over x. That is the quotient of 45 and a number. And next, we have the ratio of a number and 96. Whenever we see the word ratio, we need to divide. So we have the ratio of a number. Let us use y to represent the number. And we have the ratio of this and 96. So y over 96. This will represent the ratio of a number and 96. Now let us have a look at a few problems which are a bit more complicated. Let us have a look at the first sentence. We have the sum of thrice a number and 23. So we have the sum of thrice a number and 23. So we have the sum. So we're going to use the addition sign. And we have the sum of thrice a number and 23. So thrice a number, that is 3 times a number. Let us use n to represent that number. And with this, we are going to add 23. And so what do we have? We have the sum of thrice a number and 23. So we have expressed the sum of thrice a number and 23 as 3n plus 23. Let us have a look at the next one. We have 45 decreased by one-third of a number. So we have 45, and we can see that this is decreased by what? It is decreased by one-third of a number. So first of all, we're going to write 45, and we decrease this by one-third of a number. So we subtract from this one-third of a number. Let us use m to represent the number. And so we have ended up with 45 decreased by one-third of a number. So we end up with 45 minus 1 over 3 times m. Next, what do we have? 
we have the product of 9 and the sum of 3 and a number. So we have the product of the number 9 and the sum of 3 and a number. So we have the product, so we're going to use a multiplication sign. And we have the product of 9 and the sum of 3 and a number. So we're going to use parentheses. And within these parentheses, we are going to write the sum of 3 and a number. So the sum of 3 and a number, let us use A to represent this. So we have written the product of the number 9 and the sum of 3 and a number. And we can also write that like this, 9 times 3 plus A. So this is our required answer. Now have a look at the next one. Divide the difference between 5 and a number by 18. So we want to divide the difference between 5 and a number by 18. So first of all, what is the difference between 5 and a number? We have 5 minus a number. Let us use B to represent that. And we divide this by 18. And so this symbol over here is used to represent division. And we divide the difference between 5 and a number by 18. And so this is our required answer, 5 minus b over 18. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. See you next time.